it's the end of January, about 20 past six in the morning. Uh, we've got a westerly wind. We're going to drive over to a farm that's called West Farm, funnily enough. Um, the wind should be good for trying to approach some fallow over there. So we're going to head over now, see if there's any fallow on that side. Uh, if there's nothing there, because they quite often go back across the boundary before it gets light, uh, we'll probably head up the big wood and try and find some red or something. It's still fairly dark and I want to go to another area on this farm but just while we've are uh, got a bit of time I'm just going to have a quick look with the thermal across a couple of fields see if there's anything out that we can stalk onto later on. We just parked up. I'm going to walk over to where the fallow usually are, but I don't know if you can hear on camera, but there's some uh, several groups of English partridge just in these stubble fields, which we can hear chirping away. It's nice to hear. feeding on a hedge right by the uh, farmer's house so we'll just keep going back down the track here and then try and come along the next hedge row towards them and see if we can get in a safe position big group in front of us just come out of nowhere they're running around on the um, the plastic which is covering these carrots which is annoying because obviously they're going to do a fair bit of damage on there couldn't shoot them where they are because you've got a farmyard down at the bottom it's just not safe we'll just have a look through the hedge see if we can get a shot on something there There's a good, uh, maybe 40 fallow there, came through the hedge, settled in the corner of the field over there, but 300 metres away, um, it's just too far in this light as well, and they're quite jumpy, so they've now gone back into the trees. We'll cut round the back here, see if we can cut them off if they come out towards our boundary. There's another one in the tree line on the left. So those fallow, they came into um, this tree belt to my left. I don't think they're holding there. There's not enough shelter in there for them to all stay in there. So there's no sign of them out here. We'll just drop down the next little hill and have a look in the bottom. Maybe they're in there. If not, we'll have to... Uh, Admit defeat with those and go and have a look somewhere else. Yeah, they're down here. Just come in right behind me, Ollie.
bunched up at the moment. There's just two on that left-hand edge. Just need one of them to move a little bit. Stay on that last one, Ollie. No. Come here. Well, there you go, it's the joy of fallow, I'm afraid. We um, obviously caught up with them down at the bottom of this field on my right-hand side, um, all bunched up together. There was two out on the left-hand side, a doe and a fawn. Um, but they were, the fawn was just stood in front of the doe a little bit too much. Um, it was also like 250 metres with probably a 20 mile an hour crosswind. So it's just too risky to take a shot. Um, and obviously they ran to the left through the, the tree belt here, stopped out in this next field, um, but they were then like 300 metres uh, with obviously the same style of wind and it's just too risky to take a shot. So uh, frustrating, but that's the way it is, I'm afraid. You almost need a, a load of high seats really and just, just fill them up with stalkers and just try and shoot several as you move them around that way with fallow. Um, so yeah, they've gone across the boundary now into a wood next door and uh, we'll head back to the truck, go and see if we can find some red deer in the big wood I reckon. We've come up the top end of the big wood now. Obviously that wind's picked up a bit more. So we're just gonna uh, get into the middle of the wood, try and get out of the wind, uh, see if there's any red deer in there, and try and get one or two of those, hopefully. We're in the middle of the wood, it's quite sheltered again, so we'll just go down the main ride and then probably head down to the left. There's usually a few hang around there. The thermal's picking up something through here, um, but we've got a lot more in the corner of this fenced area, so we've got two fences between us and whatever it is. And I can't see it through the binoculars, so we just have to keep creeping up slowly. Try not to use the thermal too much, because you tend to rely on them a little bit after a while. But when we do catch up with some red deer, there'll probably be a decent number of them, so we need all the help we can get. Just about to turn the corner onto another ride. There's quite often the deer lay up on this left-hand side of this block of wood. Just look around the corner, there's a young red stag about 400 metres in front of us. He's just moved into the left. He obviously hasn't seen us. But we'll just keep heading up that way slowly and see if we can see any more. Of the ride that we're walking up. They're probably 
we're going to come through to the left where those others have gone, but we still need to get like another 50, 60 metres up so that when they do come through, it's not a silly long shot. So we just have to keep going carefully. See that big one stood there? Yeah, looked a good reaction. Well, um, yeah, there was quite a few there. A lot had already gone across um, that we hadn't seen before. There was still a few more trickling through from right to left. Um, shot like a good size hind. Um, about 230 meters using the, the DS scope. So press the button uh, on the animal or whatever you want to uh, shoot at and it gives you the distance. Then it auto corrects your crosshair uh, for the drop of your bullet. Um, so yeah, we'll just give it a few minutes. Go and have a look. Um, and we'll just wait here and be ready in case something else comes across. Well, there you go. Just wait and see if anything else came across. And just as Ollie put um, put the camera down, <coughs> just as Ollie put the camera down, uh, a group of four or five came out again. So I've got an okay shot on one of them, um, which looked like it was going to go down, but I've lost sight of it. Um, and then shot a younger one, which has gone pretty much straight down. So yeah, just shows you it's worth waiting a few minutes because something else might turn up. Right, walk over and see if we can get them all accounted for. Cool, so this is the third one I shot. Uh, the first one is straight through here, about 20 metres into the wood, which is okay for extracting it. Uh, and then the second one is sort of directly behind you guys, just over a little ditch. So they're all within, yeah, 30 metres of each other. and. Um, the ground's pretty dry for here, so we should be able to drive straight in with the trailer and get them picked up. So I'm just going to have a look at this one, make sure it's what I think it is. Yeah, that's good. It's actually a little calf, that one. It looked a lot bigger in the scope, but... Good. Another little calf. So three down the counted for. The one on my right um, is a stag calf. Then we've got a little hind calf in the middle. Um, that's quite a, a small undersized one uh, for this time of year. Uh, and then on my left, we've got uh, what looks like a, a sort of small yearling hind. So uh, all chest shot, all gone down fairly quickly. Um, obviously the middle one, the smallest one out of the three, um, good blood trail. That's probably just the, the size difference on the body compared to the others. And uh, yeah, so from this morning, obviously not getting a chance on those fallow really uh, to getting three reds down, that's quite good. So we'll head back to the vehicle, get these picked up. Okay, so another three in the larder. Um, obviously turned out quite a good morning in the end after the frustration with the fallow. 
But uh, join us again next time when we'll be after the smaller deer. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, and obviously leave a comment as well.